Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Thursday Morning. It's Stephen Whiteside here from theuptrend.com. In the pre-market this morning, stock index futures are trading above fair value. They're up sharply in the pre-market. Dow futures up around 200 points. Uh, we've got uh, the NASDAQ futures up nearly 300 points in the pre-market on Thursday morning. Now, I'm doing this video ahead of all the economic numbers coming out at 8.30 this morning, and they could certainly change the tone and direction of the market. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see how the market reacts to those numbers. Now, the Chinese uh, government added more stimulus yesterday, and uh, that has uh, propped up markets around the world, including the Chinese market. I don't have a lot of Chinese stocks in the database anymore. We've taken most of them out over the years as they haven't done anything for the past few years. Uh, this is Alibaba, which is still in our database. This is a monthly chart. Uh, from where we are right now to the peak back in 2020, we'd have to go up 300%. Another stock we do have in the database is Tencent, and from where we are right now, we'd have to go up 100% to get back to where we were in 2020. Now, over time, maybe the Chinese market can improve and uh, these stocks can go up with the rest of the global market, but uh, that's certainly not the case at the moment. Now, uh, what a lot of people are focusing on this morning is Micron's earnings, which came out last night. The stock is on a buy signal. It's uh, trading below the flypaper channel, so we were looking at the flypaper channel as potential resistance. We're trading up at the top of the flypaper channel at the moment. If we can take out that, then 11250 would be our next target, but uh, we failed to hit that target back in August. So the August highs may be the first target, and then uh, 11250. If we can take out 11250, then 125 would come into play, but we're not there just yet. Now, speaking of semiconductors, Intel moved up again yesterday. Uh, we're coming up to the $25 level, which is not only a daily, it's a weekly and a monthly price target. If we go back to 2022, early 2023, uh, Intel was using the $25 level as support. And you can see there's a lot of congestion between $25 and $31 and $25. So I think it's going to be pretty hard for Intel to get through that level unless there's a takeover offer or some huge partnership that the market is not expecting. Now, gold is hitting a new high in the pre-market this morning. So congratulations to those of you long gold. Now, looking at the VIX, the VIX for the S&P 500 moved uh, up slightly yesterday, but uh, just by a tinge, uh, looking for a close above 1787 on uh, Thursday to give us a buy signal. Not expecting that to happen from what we're seeing in the pre-market this morning. Uh, the uh, VIX for the TSX 60 traded up through the upper channel line yesterday, but did not close there. So we're looking for a close on Thursday above 1217. And of course, We'll have to see how that matches up with the market if that were to happen. Looking at the major index ETFs, we had a lot of early warning signals come up yesterday on the panic zone charts, uh, but of course uh, we don't need to do anything about those on Thursday morning. Uh, there's the Dow. It traded down to the upper channel line and closed below the previous day's low. The uh, iShares for the TSX 60 also closed below the previous day's low, but they're all going to be moving higher in the pre-market this morning. Fairly quiet trading for the S&P 500 on Wednesday. Fairly quiet trading for the NASDAQ, uh, making a new high for this move on Wednesday. Now, what didn't work on Wednesday? Well, the Russell 2000 pulled back into the channel. So a close on Thursday below 217.06 would give us a sell signal. And that would join the micro caps, which are back on a sell signal as of Wednesday's close. Now, we also saw financials roll over yesterday. So U.S. financials, U.S. banks, and U.S. regional banks are all back on sell signals as of Wednesday's close. Now, the bond market has pulled back. So just ordinary traditional bonds have pulled back over the past few days. So looking at the TLT or the XBB, the market is still uh, interested in the high-risk bonds, whether you're looking at the emerging markets or uh, the junk bond market, they're still on buy signals, so no change there. People are just getting out of traditional bonds. Uh, Profit-taking, maybe. I'm, I'm not sure at the present time, but uh, certainly uh, falling bond prices puts upward pressure on interest rates. Let's uh, finish off uh, this morning's presentation, take a look at the Magnificent 8, starting off with the ETF, which made a new high for this move on Wednesday. That uh, didn't come on the back of Apple, which was down a dollar on the day. So a close below 221.97 would give us a sell signal on Thursday. 
Inside day for Amazon, Amazon's trying to break through the 193.75 level. If we can do that, $200 would be our next target. And that's where uh, Amazon peaked out back in the summer. Looking at Alphabet, nobody loves Alphabet at the moment. Uh, we're trying to break away from 162.50. That would take us up to 168.75, which is where we peaked back in August. Uh, we're still underwater when you look at the midterm chart here, and the pros have not taken control. So that could happen on Thursday. Uh, looking at our panic zone chart, we're certainly projecting much higher up to the 180 level, and that would take us back up to fill that open gap. But uh, sometimes you don't get what you project. Next up, we're looking at Meta. Meta's currently up at the top of the panic zones. We're stuck at uh, 562.50. If we can break away from that, then uh, 593.75 would be our next target. Microsoft's traded in the channel for the past couple of days, uh, so we've run out of buyers at the present time. Looking for a close below $426.72 on Thursday to give us a sell signal. Uh, you can see we ran out of, out of momentum up at the uh, 437.50 level. Well, what happened was we traded up to the bottom of the open gap over here from July, and that's where we ran out of buyers. So if we can take out the recent high, then 453.13 could certainly come into play. Now, looking at uh, NVIDIA, NVIDIA moved up yesterday, new high for this move for NVIDIA. Our next target was uh, 125. We got as high as 124.94 yesterday. Uh, just above that level, uh, we faded out uh, in August up at the 131 level. If we can take out the August highs, then uh, 137.50 comes into play. Uh, but back here in July, we couldn't get up to that target. So for NVIDIA, we've been making a series of lower highs over the past couple of months. Maybe we can change that on Thursday. The pros have come back to take control. So that could help NVIDIA move higher. Looking at Shopify, we're up at the top of our projected trading range on the U.S. symbol and the Canadian symbol. We still have some room to go to the 112.50 level. Then looking at Tesla, Tesla moved up yesterday, trying to get to uh, 265.63. That's where we peaked out back in July. That is our next target. If we can take that out, then 281.25 comes into play. Now, some people have added uh, Taiwan Semiconductors to this list. It moved up yesterday. Uh, just uh, 38 cents, but it's going to continue to move higher this morning. Our next target is 187.50. We peaked just above that level back in July. If we can take out the July highs, then $200 would come into play. Let's uh, finish off this morning's presentation with one last chart, and that is crude oil. Crude oil was down yesterday. It's down again in the pre-market this morning, so going in the opposite direction of everything else. Uh, that's, of course, uh, good for the economy, good for the consumer, but not necessarily good for the Canadian market, as it uh, will probably put downward pressure on the energy sector. Okay, folks, that's all for this morning's presentation. Have a great day. Next time you'll hear my voice is on Friday morning.